Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel for this week's toolbox safety topic video. Before we get started, make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below to encourage me to make more videos of this type. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll find additional videos of this nature, other safety related videos and leadership training videos. And if you find the information useful or helpful, make sure you share it with your colleagues and coworkers. Well, let's go ahead and get started with this week's toolbox safety topic video. Now I found this uh, struck by incidents safety topic and I found it at safety talk ideas and it can be found in the Raken app. Check it out. It's pretty good. With all the moving equipment and flying debris and falling objects on a construction site, it can be a very dangerous place for an individual on the ground. It is important to understand the specific hazards of the work for that day as well as the job site overall as ground personnel who will be on the job site. Furthermore, everyone needs to work together to eliminate or mitigate the hazards that result in struck by incidents. Let's talk about struck by incidents. Struck by incidents are one of the biggest risks to ground personnel on any construction site. These incidents are consistently responsible for a significant number of fatalities in the construction industry each year. There are many struck by hazards on every construction site that can severely injure or kill workers on any given day. Common struck by hazards include moving equipment, falling objects, and flying debris. And here are some safeguards to prevent struck by incidents. Eliminate as many struck by hazards due to moving equipment as possible. For example, does a piece of equipment or a vehicle need to be operating in an area where there are pedestrians? Can unnecessary backing be eliminated? Can the worker on the ground wait to complete the task they were assigned to do or complete it somewhere else away from moving equipment? Eliminate the potential for falling objects. Remove materials or tools that are located on an elevated level when possible. If elimination is not possible, then make sure that there are proper tow boards located on any elevated surface to prevent objects from sliding off. Another option is to tie off tools and material to ensure that they do not fall to a lower level. Barricade work zones to prevent entry where equipment is operating or work is being performed overhead. Substantial barricades such as fences will help prevent ground personnel from entering an area where they could be injured. Barricade or separate any work tasks that create flying debris. For example, workers should not be exposed to grinding operations or operations that create excessive dust, like cutting concrete, if they are not the ones completing the task. In summary, it's difficult to fully eliminate the hazards that result in struck by incidents, but proper planning and work zone delineation can help to eliminate the exposure to these risks. Make sure to evaluate your work tasks to see if there are any unnecessary risks to ground personnel due to the aforementioned hazards. And here's a discussion point. What are some of the struck by hazards that we face? How can we eliminate some of these hazards on the job site? All right, boys and girls, that's it for this week's toolbox safety topic video. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for watching. Make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below here to encourage me to make more videos of this type. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will find additional videos of this nature, other safety-related videos, and leadership training videos. And until we see each other again, take care of yourself because you're number one. Look out for your co-workers and help ensure their safety. Have a grateful day and I will see you in the field.
All right, boys and girls, that was a short one. Uh, been a long week for me. Uh, let's see, I made some notes here. I left here day before yesterday in the morning, drove 780 miles and visited uh, nine job sites, and I was back at my desk at noon today. So, been quite an exciting week, a lot of good things going on. Uh, I really need to make I really need to make a video on horizontal lifelines. Uh, they're great ways to work uh, uh, vertically on I mean horizontally on a building on a roof, working at leading edges. They're great, but they have to be designed by a professional, or they have to be an engineered system that it, that is put together by a competent person. So I really need to make that. If you have any, if you have an opportunity to work with uh, horizontal lifelines and you have some questions, reach out to me and uh, we'll we'll get together and uh, and get you moving in the right direction for your training purposes and for the training purposes of your team. If there's any other video you'd like to see, just leave a comment down below saying, hey, can you make a video on this? And I'll put something together and publish it for your benefit as well as the benefit of others. Because believe me, if you're asking about it, someone else is worried about it too. Uh, if you have a specific question about safety or anything else, uh, just leave another, leave a comment down below. Say, hey, Scott, man, what do you think about this? And uh, we'll start the conversation. Uh, I'm not going to leave any of the Easter eggs that I've been leaving over the past few videos, but it is that time of year where I suspect that uh, more Easter eggs will be popping up. And uh, I'll make sure in the future to include some more of those. And lately, I haven't done the safety recap. I've just been extremely busy. Um, but make sure you should give me the thumb up because that algorithm really, really likes that and it helped promote the channel. Anyway, I'm not going to spend any more time spinning my wheels, so to say. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a grateful day and uh, I will see you in the field. Stop recording.